The VDB extrapolate node gets used to adjust SDF volumes. If you're not familiar with volumes, do check out Houdini for the New Artist 2, or at least have a basic understanding of what VDBs are, because I'll assume you know a few things going into this one. But as an example, let's say that we have an SDF volume of our little elephant friend right here. If we have him and we want to change the way that the SDF volume is calculated, we can use the VDB extrapolate. Now, in order to see this, we're going to also use a volume slice right here. And I'll also go ahead and make a new marker that shows the values that are being generated by these voxels. Let's go ahead and turn down the resolution of that a little bit. So maybe something around here. And what you'll notice about this whole thing is as we measure away from the surface, we reach a maximum measured distance. And then the value just caps out at that maximum distance. So right now, away from the surface, that's a value of 0 0.059964. If let's say we want to expand the narrow band, we want to measure out further, we could do that with the VDB extrapolate right here. So as an example, if I bring the expand SDF narrow band right here, further out with the dilation, you could see that now we are measuring further and further away from the surface. And so at a value of 10, now our maximum measure distance is 0.12995, something like that. It's kind of like going to the VDB from polygons and turning up the exterior or interior band voxels. Same exact thing. What's also nice though, is that we can specify a specific direction. So we could say only the values that are outside the mesh get pushed out or vice versa values inside the mesh. And the reason why that might be nice is if you're dealing with a very heavy volume, you want to optimize that as much as possible. And sometimes that means you don't need to measure on the inside of the mesh or the outside. You may just need to find one direction and go from there. Again, it can make your volumes a lot lighter. Okay, so that about does it for that particular operation. There's another one here that allows you to convert a fog to an SDF. And what's the difference between that and doing just a normal convert VDB? The main difference is that the convert VDB right here will give you by default a few voxels of measured distance away from the surface. What's nice about the VDB extrapolate, or what may be nice, is the fact that it doesn't measure very far away from the surface, and so the converted volume becomes super light. I'll go ahead and create a copy of that real quick. We'll change this to fog VDB to SDF, and I'm going to turn our little elephant dude into a fog. So, we need to specify a fog ISO value. That's where it draws the surface. Let's say 0.05, right about there. He's a little bit chunky, but you know, who's to judge, right? I think he looks pretty all right for the time being. Once we have that, you'll notice that, like I said, we don't really measure very far away from the surface. As a matter of fact, I can't even tell what I'm looking at here. <laughs> to compare this, Let's middle mouse and see that we have 1.94 megabytes versus the 3.4 right here. So again, this might be useful if you need an SDF from a fog that's using a lot of data. And if you wanna be very lightweight, that might be when you use the VDB extrapolate. Okay, so we have that. What about renormalizing the SDF? What that will basically do is it'll change where zero exists along the volume. So going back here to our little elephant dude, let's go ahead and add maybe seven exterior voxels to this. So we're measuring seven voxels away from the surface. The rule here is that as you renormalize this SDF, you can't go further than the furthest measured distance. So as I turn this up, we could see that he's starting to blow up. And as soon as we hit the maximum measured area, let's say right around here, 
you'll notice that he disappears. So the way that this works is that we change where zero exists on the SDF based off of the wiggle room we set with the interior and exterior band voxels. So how far away you measured from the surface. If we measure now, right here, let's go ahead and set this to 0.1 so that we can see this a bit more easily. There we go. We've essentially changed it from right here being the surface and we've brought that out right here. One thing I would also recommend if you decide to go this route is if you change that area, it's worth doing a VDB renormalize SDF right after that. So go ahead and do that, add a few iterations that generally speaking will clean up the new SDF that you've formed. Uh, so that's a general way of thinking about this, but I do recommend doing a few iterations of that. It'll basically improve the accuracy of this whole thing. And you also might want to consider measuring out a few more interior and exterior band voxels. So if we expand the SDF narrow band, again, we can do that in all directions by a value of 10, we're not changing where the surface is, but now we've given ourselves some wiggle room as to how far away we've measured from the surface. So there you go. That is another great use for the VDB extrapolate. So that does it as far as the basic usage goes for the VDB extrapolate. Now there's more things to know about this. If you are interested in the more advanced aspects, then check out the node Bible at cgforge.com where I go over every single parameter in detail. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great day.